There's something deflating about wanting a guy to pursue you when he suddenly starts pulling back, playing hard to get, or giving you mixed signals. And the worst part is the feeling that his indecision and lack of hunger are limiting your chances for love. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the fastest and most elegant way to reclaim your high value when a guy is no longer that into you. There's a feeling of heaviness when you feel like you finally found the right guy, the guy who checks all the boxes. And suddenly you realize that it's happening again. He's losing interest. He's no longer into you. He's maybe being weird about things. He's not pursuing you or calling you or setting off the dates the way he used to. And the reason why it's so disconcerting is because there's a part of you that feels A, disappointed at the fact that this is happening because it's probably not the first time that it's happened to you. Two, there's a feeling of self-consciousness and fear around what's wrong with me? Did I do something wrong? Am I not beautiful enough, smart enough, something enough for him to continue being interested in me? And third, because there's a feeling of how long will it take? So a feeling of lack. How long will it take before another guy shows up who seems to check all the boxes? And because it's something that is highly emotional, we typically tend to go all in and pursue the guy and feel anxious and maybe try to dance the seven veils dance, metaphorically speaking, to see if he can get interested again. And typically what that does is it shows off a little bit of an air of desperation. And at the same time, if the guy is slightly avoidant, it pushes him away and he doubles down in his indecision about you. So what I want to do today is give you a seven step process that you can follow anytime you feel like you found someone and then he's starting to play hot and cold and you hate that feeling and you want to find the love that you came here for in this lifetime without feeling like you're degrading yourself or lowering your standards. The first step when you want to reclaim your power, if a guy stops being into you, is to find the hidden blessing. I'm starting with this because it's one of the toughest spots, but if you can pull through and you can, if you really want to, you can reclaim a sense of purpose that will, instead of taking it to a cynical place, will take you to a place of possibilities where you can now find a second wind, more strength to actually follow through. So maybe the hidden blessing is that this guy showing up in your life, rekindle that feeling of, I want a partner. Maybe the way he showed up reminded you that there are guys, he's not one of them perhaps right now, who can show up, who can be emotionally connected, who can be intelligent, who are interested in you. And again, he may not be the solution to your answers, but there's that feeling and vibration that he's calling upon you to reclaim and stand for again. Maybe he just came to tell you that this is something that is really important in your life and that you can't just leave it up to chance. Whatever the specific answer might be for you, it's worth investing some time. Play some music, take deep breaths, and ask yourself the question, what could be the hidden blessing in this specific situation? If you take it down the road of this always happens to me and all the good guys are taking, then you're going down the path of being on a 10-year plan. And I want you to avoid experiencing that. Number two is I want you to start embracing the notion that your hypothesis was wrong. Because if what you're saying to yourself is I lost on this amazing opportunity, you're going to feel horrible. But what if it's not an amazing opportunity? It just seemed like an amazing opportunity. What if your decisions about this guy, his intelligence, his awesomeness are slightly flawed? What if your assessment of what this was is more of a mirage in the desert than the truth of something that's amazing that you're missing out on? Again, I highly encourage you to go back and take a look at the possibility that the ideas you had about this guy were not correct. And as a result of that, you're not leaving gold on the table. You're simply being called for to go for what you really want, even though this guy is clearly not the best fit for you. Number three, I need you to start embracing a stance. And the stance is, my aliveness is the seed of my abundance with men. Here's why. Because your ability to create stronger connections, to be more magnetic, to be more attractive, to not have to work so hard at getting the type of guy you want to actually notice you and want to go out with you and pursue you, stems from your feeling of aliveness. So this is one of those times where doubling down on your sense of passion and purpose and excitement and joy and bliss will really play out. You're not doing this for the guy. It just so happens that when 
you show up this way, when you show up with a full set of hard connected radiance, you are more attractive, you are more pursuable, you are more approachable. And it's like the best of both worlds. Your life gets better and you get more chances with men. Number four is I need you to take back your power and you get to decide what taking back your power looks like. In some cases, taking back your power means saying, I'm done. I'm going to move on. And this guy is history. I'm not wanting to connect to him anymore. In some cases, taking back your power is calling him and messaging him, maybe perhaps having a conversation saying, hey, I noticed that you were super excited when we first started connecting. And for some reason, it seems like you're not as excited as you used to be. And I'm wondering if something happened. So being vulnerable, saying I'm noticing a difference. Tell me what's going on. You're not making him wrong for it. You're not asking him to change things. You're just saying, hey, what's happening? That might be taking back your power. For some of you, taking back your power might mean when the guy tells you that there's something weird, that he's confused, saying, you know what? I totally acknowledge that you're going through something difficult. And I really think you're a cool guy. And I'm looking for something very specific at this stage in my life. I'm looking for someone who's clear about what he wants, who's clear about pursuing me. And if that's not you right now, I'd rather part as good friends right now and reconnect if at some point you want to do this, than to try to maybe force something that's not there to begin with. Taking back your power means you call the shots. You decide how you want to move forward. You're doing something different from the way you were doing things. You're no longer holding your breath metaphorically for this dude to continue showing up in your life, hoping that one day he changes. You're saying, if this can happen in a way that's exciting and fulfilling for me, I'm willing to unexclusively explore this. If not, I'm happy to walk away, even though you seem like a great guy. Take back your power. Now, before I share my last three steps, which are really, really important, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet you're not fully aware of the truth, the root cause why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every continent, every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, and helping those women who sometimes have never had the type of relationship they want to finally get it, to create a life commitment with someone. And I've put together a quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the elusive answer to the question, why you're still single. If you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link on the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in 60 seconds, you'll have the answer to the question, why you're still single. And better yet, a custom report is going to share with you, based on your specific blind spot, what's the number one thing you can do today to attract the guy you want in a fraction of the time. Step number five, if you want to reclaim your power, is be more generous with your gift. You're not doing this thing to attract men. It just so happens that when you're more generous with your gift, you'll attract more men. What does being more generous with your gift means? It means being more generous with your smile, dropping the handkerchief more frequently, being more open, asking more questions, making more eye contact, being more present, being available to go out and do things that make the possibility of connecting with someone a reality for you. When you decide, I'm going to die without my music inside of me. I'm going to express that gift, that legacy, long before I'm gone. If you do that, the act of showing up this way, the act of being highly connected and radiant and generous will create far more options for you right now. Number six is I need you to start embracing short-term discomfort more frequently. What does that mean? That means that I hear women who say, well, I've been going to the same gym for five years and I never connect with anyone there. Change gyms. I mean, choose to go to a gym where you can exercise and connect with men. Or I go to salsa lessons every week and all the guys have either a girlfriend or they're not in a relationship. Well, stop going to salsa lessons for the purpose of connecting with guys. You can still go there. Just don't count it as one of your outings for connecting with men. Do something different. Go to that park you've never gone to. Go to that meetup you've never gone to. Go to the workspace that you've never gone to. Do something different. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing, hoping secretly to get some different result. Change it up. Make sure that you're more open and you're doing things in different environments. That combination of more radiance, more aliveness, and more strategy can land you in front of guys who are hungry to get to know you. Number seven, set your own terms. You're doing this again. You're starting over. Guess what? You get to call the shots. You get to say, hey, here's what I need to go on a date with you. Here's what I need to physically connect with you. I don't just kiss guys on the first date because they took me out. I need to get to know them better. I don't have sex with guys until I'm exclusive. I don't become exclusive until this and that has happened. So when you set your own terms, 
you'll see two different types of guys. Guys who cannot step up to your new terms and will self-disqualify, and guys who will show up stronger, more connected, more pursuant, because they know that to get you, they have to work. There is competition. You're not just dating one guy and making him your de facto boyfriend as a result of going on one date with him. You're saying, I will continue dating you and other guys until we both determine we're the best fit for each other. He will continue showing up stronger. You will not have the feeling of the guy is losing interest in me. And if he does, then guess what? <laughs> you have multiple other options. Hope this is useful and helpful. If it is, it would mean the world to me and to my channel, because this is how I grow and can reach more women. If you click like and subscribe, please send this to someone who needs to hear it. And if you want to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, games or stupid techniques, make sure to go to the next video right here.